Good morning, my friends. How are you doing? Uh, okay, so it's hiking. We're going to take off hiking today. I um, just realized we're in, well, I didn't just realize, but we're in a heat wave and it's going to go up to over 100 degrees. But I'm hoping if I can get up top, it'll cool down a little bit. So that's just one extra reason to get out of Dodge as quick as I can. Anyways, um, big climb, like eight, nine miles straight up. So I don't expect to do much more than that. I'd like to get to the top. That's all I worry about today. If I can sneak in a 12 or 15, that'd be nice, but we'll see how I feel. I have to go to the post office. I want to send a couple things home, like um, winter gloves and an extra mid-layer that I had. I want to lighten my load a little bit. I haven't quite pulled the trigger yet on whether I want to send the drone home or not, but I do at some point, as soon as I can get a cold soap jar, I, uh, I'll, send, I'll send the stove home. So, sorry I'm a little groggy and I just, I just got up. Uh, and so I uh, haven't had my coffee yet. So until that happens, I'm usually kind of airheaded. But anyways, let's go get it. It's still cool. Uh, I won't be out of here much before about noon. So, uh, I mean, it, it'll be at least a full, full half day. Is that a thing? Full half day. I don't know. I should just go back to bed. So let me show you around. This is a historic building, very historic. It was one of the only buildings standing uh, in the 1840s during the gold rush. In this exact room, you would have had old cowboys and gunslingers and who knows, maybe prostitutes upstairs. I don't know. Uh, but this is a very old building. It has a lot of history. Uh, and it really does look like something out of an old Western. Check it out. There's old pictures of people from the 1800s, which is pretty awesome here. There's one there from 1838. Crazy. I don't know who that is. Here's a picture of the hotel. Back, I don't even know when. I don't think they had photographs in 1830s or 40s. So that had to be later. But they had horses and carriages. I do know that. Pretty cool, huh? I found this quite fascinating, quite interesting, actually. Dark saloon. This would have been a hotel slash saloon, I think. Or at the very least, uh, this would have been the main hotel in town. And maybe the general store would have been the saloon, but it doesn't look anything like it. This looks more like a, a saloon, per se. Okay, so bunch of us are going to, I think it's called the Red Moose, Red Moose Cafe. It opens at 8. Sorry, I can't see. I can't see anything. I think it's up here. Anyways, uh, then after that, I'm going to go back to the hotel, get packed up, and check out, wait for the post office to open, make sure my stuff is charged. There is charging at the post office. And then head out, get back on trail. It'll be super hot and it'll only be a half a day, but at least I can get, you know, some part way up that mountain. I think. Oh, here it is. Perfect. Okay, so here I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm doing to try to uh, lighten my load and to alleviate not only the heat, but my breathing 
altitude, all of the above. Of course, the best way to lose weight in your pack is to lose it right here in your belly. And so, of course, that's something I am, I am absolutely taking into consideration. Uh, I'm eating different, and I'm also going to do a major, major thing here. So I bought this um, jar of Skippy peanut butter. I'm not going to eat the peanut butter. I mean, I might have a little bit of it, but not much. I don't really believe in that, uh, but that's just me. Anyways, it's a heavier jar than I'm used to, than I want, uh, but I can order another jar that's much lighter and have it sent up the trail. But for now, I'm going to empty this out and use this as my cold soaking jar, and I'm going to send my stove back to Canada. That's going to save me about 12 ounces. That's big. That, that's a massive, massive change. And most, I just found out most of my dehydrated meals uh, can be cold soaked. I was not aware of this. I just found out recently that freeze dried food, except for Mountain House, Mountain House is the only one. You can do their pastas, but not their chicken. Anything with chicken in it will not cold soak. It, it'll still come out as a hard chunk. Um, so the ones, the meals that I already have, I can still use, right? Uh, yes, I'll go to mashed potatoes and I'll go to ramen and I'll do that stuff that's still not very good for you. But let's face it, none of it's really good for you. I think the secret is just to stop, travel really light, stop at every town and eat, eat healthy food. Or at least try to go to a restaurant and have food that, you can recognize instead of being a powder or a whatever which is what we're so used to on trail because it I mean let's face it it preserves well and so sure it makes sense and it's lighter because it's it's dehydrated or freeze-dried or whatever and something else I'm doing sending home I'm gonna send these gloves home these are fleece lined outdoor research gloves that I brought mostly for the Sierra um, these are like about three ounces gonna get rid of those and although I really love this top it's the evolved supply company uh, it's a similar thing to my echo Sun hoodie but it's a 150 weight what's called a 150 GSM Sun hoodie merino it's quite heavy this this is actually at least five or six ounces so here's a half a pound here there's three quarters of a pound in the stove. And this is my stove setup. It's just a Tox 750 with a jet boil that has a PZO igniter in it. It's, um, this whole thing weighs 14 ounces with the canister. So it's almost a pound. So you add, you take that 14 away, but you add 2.8 ounces in this jar. So you can see where I'm going with this, with the math, right? Basically, I'm going to drop about a pound and a half off my base weight. My base weight was already pretty light. I don't know the exact number. I'd have to go back to lighter pack, but it's, it's probably going to be around seven, seven and a half pounds when I'm done here. That will go a long way to helping me do more miles, to have less stress on my body, less impact. Things. You know, you just kind of try something and you do it for a while. And you, like for example, my top. Yes, that top, I could wear that as a night top, a night shirt. However, I have a liner in my, that I use with my quilt anyways. So that would protect my sweaty top from, from the, the quilt, which is kind of dual purpose. So why have two tops one for sleeping and one for daytime bah, nothing ever goes my way <laughs> it seems so they can't send this package so either i carry it to another town and then deal with that or another hiker had suggested something to me why not just send it up the trail somewhere and then deal with it when you get up there and just send it home from there so that's what I might do. I'm going to talk to a friend of mine who's got a uh, place in Mazama, which I'm going to. I already told you about that, remember? Yeah, so I'm going up to Mary's, to the, ra uh, to the Raven, sorry, the Lion, 
and uh, maybe I'll send it there. Well, I'm going to ask her first if it's okay, and then when I get up there, I'll bounce it on internationally home. That way I don't have to carry it every day, all day. Um, I don't have to deal with any of that, which is, which is kind of nice. And I think it's only like 10 bucks for, for domestic shipping. So I might do that. So, okay. Silly check. The poles are going with me. The box is going to the post office. The canister is going in the hiker box. Okay. Looks good, eh? What do you think? Nothing. Nothing under the bed. Okay, so change of plans. It took me till 2 o'clock this afternoon to get things sorted out with the post office. I finally gave up. They said they could not send from here any international packages. So instead, I sent the box up to Chester, California. Then when I get there, I'll just deal with them when, I, when I'm there. I'll okay, so since my friend on trail paid for the room, I went out and bought us a couple of steaks and uh, we're gonna cook them up on the grill. So it's gonna be a good time. Uh, you know, anytime the temperatures uh, go up over 100 and up approaching 110, 110 degrees, that, and you're exerting yourself and you're carrying weight on your back. Yeah, no, it's, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. So I'm gonna hydrate, stay as hydrated as I can, drink a lot. Luckily, there's a lot of water on trail that I should be able to tap into. Okay, uh, okay so I, I uh, didn't oh, make it out here. this morning. It was 4th of July. Here's my new friends. We're all going down to the swimming hole. Check it out. Woo! No, no, I'm just... Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Like, that down. So we're all gonna go down to uh, to the river to swim, to hang out. Uh, too many zeros, too many zeros. I gotta hunker down and get some miles in, but not today. Today's July Fourth, and happy Happy Independence Day to all my American friends. You know who you are, and um, let's go get it. Okay, so we're going down to the river. One of us is uh, carrying all the refreshments. It's hot as hell. It's over 100 degrees. I'm happy, honestly, to not be on trail today. Just saying. So we came upon this guy on when we were swimming and he invited us to his house for hot dogs. How cool is this?